Guests in my podcast are like my coffee, strong, flavorful, and they always brighten my day. We have amazing conversations over coffee. We cover everything from growth to inspiring communities, empowering customers, and sharing exceptional leadership moments. In this season, we're hosting incredible leaders whose journeys inspired me to keep growing and learning every day. I'm Iman, and I welcome you to my podcast, Coffee With Me, Leaders of Change. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my new episode of Coffee with Iman, Leaders of Change. Today, I have the absolute pleasure of having Miki Tsusaka, our Microsoft Japan president. Welcome, Miki. Thank you so much for having me. I look forward to the conversation. Same here. Let me tell you a little bit about Miki. She is Microsoft Japan president. She leads Microsoft's engagement with customers and business partners. She's also responsible for all product solution services and support offerings in Japan. In her role, Miki is very focused on enabling the acceleration of Japan's digital transformation, including exploring the potential of AI-powered solutions in Japan and beyond. In addition, she continues to build and reinforce Microsoft's brand and reputation in Japan as a trusted partner for individuals, organizations, and governments. Prior to joining Microsoft, Miki was a senior partner and managing director at Boston Consulting Group, helping clients implement growth strategies, improve profitability, and enable digital transformation. Welcome again. Thank you. Let's take a seat. Sounds good. Okay, first question. Okay. 90 days on the job. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I feel great. I can't believe it's already been 90 days. On one hand, it feels like it just finished in a flash. On the other hand, every day is a heavy day of learning. There's so much I still need to learn, but I'm blessed with people like you and those around me that are teaching me the job. We love you. We, I love being here. I really do. And with everything going on right now in the yes. world around Microsoft and generative AI, boy, did I join Microsoft at the right time. You did. You know, you've been with your previous company for quite some time. Yes. How is the difference of culture is landing with you? A lot of people ask me that question. Really? Well, I start actually with the similarities. I think the missions of the companies are quite similar around, you know, just empowering people to be at their best. Our customers, partners, clients are remarkably similar. We serve the same segments across the world. Yes. And in my market in Japan, the quality of talent, you know, we have a great team at Microsoft Japan and beyond, and I was blessed with that in my former firm as well. So those are the similarities and the energy behind both organizations. You know, there's a lot to do. There's more to do, but I think that passion for continuing to give it your all to do your best. And then we keep doing that, you know, on repeat rinse cycle um, is similar. What's different, a few things. Yes. One, I think Microsoft's big. You know, in my old company, I was joking with some colleagues about, oh, we're so complex. We're a little bureaucratic, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, 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 sweetie, no way. You know, I was at the leadership meeting uh, that Satya hosted with the top 350 people. I didn't appreciate the weight of the 220,000 people that were for Microsoft, and that's quite the ratio relative to a fairly small but wonderful firm that I used to be. So that size and scale uh, has complexity, but it also has power. Yes. So that is a big difference. It's a big difference to be in this incredible tech company. Someone asked me, oh, why did you decide to join the IT industry in Japan? I said, you know, I don't think I... Well, I did join the IT industry, I guess, but in my mind, when I started conversations with people like Ahmed, it wasn't that I was joining IT. I was joining the best company in the world that had the best set of tools, processes, platforms, people that can really help accelerate the digital transformation of their companies. And so I feel like I joined that entity as opposed to a tech company per se, but that is different than the you know management consultancy. We have tech, we have people, but the products we have here, I think, especially around generative AI, are second to none. It's amazing. I love the innovation and creativity of Microsoft. 
we innovate every day. And that's, that's, that's what keeps us going. That's the energy that fuels us day in, day out. And, you know, I'll, I'll go back a little bit on um, when you joined Microsoft, when, when the decision was made. I tell you, I had a happy dance. <laughs> I had a happy dance when I heard that a female president is joining Microsoft Japan and not any female president, Miki is joining Microsoft. Oh, that's very sweet. So it's it's a tremendous, tremendous message to um, to the market, but also to women in technology that we have a leader in Japan who is a leader yes. and also a woman. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, the data would suggest that I am unique. There are very few women leaders of a company of this size in Japan or maybe even abroad. And so I feel that responsibility to lead the charge. I'm also blessed with a leadership team right now at Microsoft Japan that is a quarter women. So I start, wow. I think, with a pretty good uh, starting point uh, in terms of diversity. It's a new chapter in my life. I hope it's a new chapter for Japan. I hope it's a new chapter for women, young and old, and all sorts of different populations of diversity itself for uh, our company, Japan and beyond. I will say, though, I do get this question, oh, how is it to be a woman leading a technology company? And how did you raise kids and did, you know, get to where you are? And I said, no, it's funny you asked that question because, you know, my husband's also a CEO of a company. And I said, sweetie, do you ever get that question? How did you become CEO and raise kids? I said, because I get that question all the time. And he says, you know, lately I've been getting that. And so I said, well, how do you answer it? Yes. And he says, I tell everybody you raise the kids. <laughs> Uh, not quite true. He's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful sense. spouse of over 35 years. Um, Just joking on the bias. Right. I did on no. the bias. So, yeah, look, I can't help the fact that I wear a skirt and I, I am a diverse leader, I suppose, in the, the sea of um, a less diverse, perhaps, leadership team that we have in a country like Japan. We're making progress, not enough. But I first want to be known and be successful as a leader. And I'm glad I have a skirt. I'm very proud to wear the skirt, but uh, leader first. And I guess I am a female leader second. Awesome. I love it. I love it. And, you know, the last 90, 90 days has been wonderful. So you are a leader <laughs> who happens to wear a skirt and sneakers. And sneakers. Oh, <laughs> well, we're in Singapore today. Yes. So, yeah. so this, it's been a hot and heavy, uh, heavy traffic, uh, heavy high motion week. Of uh, thank you with for you. doing uh, the podcast. It's amazing. Okay, again, you 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 lived in in the U.S. You lived in Japan. You traveled the world. Is that influencing your leadership style? Oh, definitely. I can't imagine life growing up in one town and one place and just staying there forever. I know there are people that have had wonderful lives that way, but I was blessed, I think, with a father that had a job that moved us back and forth since my sister and I were little kids. So, yes, I was born in Japan, but went back and forth between the U.S. and Tokyo, or so New York and Tokyo were the two cities that I know the best. I went to college and grad school in Boston, and that move has continued. And in the job, in my former company, I think I counted once that I work with consultants from, you know, over 35 countries. Wow. And why is that good for me? I get inspired by learning from different people and different cultures. I think it's important that we understand where we are similar and dissimilar. And frankly, the companies we serve at Microsoft and the customers we serve at Microsoft and my former firm, BCG, are global in nature. So it's very hard, I think, to lead an organization if you only know one country, one aspect of the globe that we live in. So I find that the global upbringing that I've had, although, hey, it's only two countries, it's frankly, it's only two languages. I applaud the people that could speak four or five languages and have literally traveled the world. So I'm a you know baby in that regard. But I'm really delighted that personal circumstance kind of let me grow up that way. And professionally, I've kept that up. If you want to go back to, to your younger self, uh -huh. what would you advise or, or, uh, to a 22 years old Miki-san or Miki-chan? <laughs> I know you speak Japanese very well, and I don't know how many people out there know that. But anyway, um, my 20-year-old self. Well, I have a 20 year son, and I watch him in action, you know. He's doing all the right things, but as a mom, I keep pushing him. 
and it's probably similar vein, which is to keep going, right? And what, a, no, don't get comfortable. And I keep pushing my son, you know, he's, he came home with great grades and I'm like, well, what else, what else are you doing? You know, are you exploring the world? Are you doing something to help somebody? And I do think that in 20 years old, when I was in college, I was very focused on my studies. I had my set of extracurriculars, but boy, I wish I made more time for more stuff. And the more stuff could be studying something completely random, more stuff could have been making friends um, that were even more different and diverse than the ones that I had. No job that I've had is nine to five. My student life was also action packed. But yeah, I wish I had, I wish I could have, you know, and um, one of my favorite classes in college. Yeah was like an introduction to music and an introduction to art class. I was a hardcore government major. I thought I was going to be a diplomat. But I have memories of many of the lectures in my music and art classes. And you know what? That's stuff I carry today. I'm not sure I remember all my government classes, honestly. But that diversity of learning and being a sponge to continue to learn and just be a better version of yourself is the advice I would give myself Awesome. You mentioned your son. Hmm. How about your daughters? So I have one daughter and two sons. Oh, no, they're going to hate this because I'm going start talking about them. They're all wonderful. They're all wonderful in their own special way. But uh, it's remarkable these three kids came out of the two same parents, but they're so similar and yet dissimilar. Um, I have a daughter that works in London. Uh, my middle son works in Tokyo. And my youngest is finishing up college in Boston. And they've been my rock too. You know, um, how do you describe to little kids what a consultant does? They knew I was getting on planes and trains and automobiles and working and on calls and, you know, writing PowerPoints. But the way I described what I did to them when they were young was that I was a business doctor. Business doctor. I would go help companies get better. If they were really sick, I would call in a specialist surgeon because I can't fix all diseases. But when you get well, I only see you once a year for a check-in. I'm not around to stick around forever. So that was the analogy I shared with the kids. I don't wow. think they quite understood what I did. I don't know if my parents really ever understood what I did. But now that they're grown, all their friends want to join Microsoft or BCG. You know? and so I think they now even, they think it's pretty cool that I have the job that I do. But I think they have increasing appreciation for my former job and increasing appreciation for a working mom. I think the three of them all assume that that's their going to be their lifestyle and we all have different choices to make. But um, I think, uh, you know, uh, they're all great. I love the analogy, business doctor. Yes. Bring in a specialist surgeon. And I think it's similar for Microsoft, right? We have so many things we can bring to a customer or a partner, but we first, before we push ourselves, we should ask the question, so what are you trying to do? What are your pain points? How can we help you? And we usually have stuff that can help though. We do. We do. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Any last words for our audience? I think, because I know this discussion is about leadership and I'm not sure I quite nailed that homework assignment. You did. You did. <gasps> no. I think to be a good leader, it's like, it's like a birthday wish to people, you know? What do I wish for you on your birthday? I wish you happiness and health. And I think good leaders need to be happy and healthy. And happiness comes from the work we do, the impact we have, the development of our own capabilities, but more so, certainly at my tenure, how we develop the next generation. That brings great happiness. And health, you know, we can't lead from the front if we're not taking care of ourselves, taking care of the people around us, making sure we uh, send the yellow flag or the SOS when things just aren't going as well as it could be. And so I carry the happiness and health mantra. I probably got it from my mom uh, and dad, but uh, those would be my final thoughts, I suppose, in terms of thinking about leadership and making sure that we as leaders are happy and healthy and we create happiness and health and impact. Love it. Thank you for today. Oh, thank you so much. We didn't even get to drink our coffee in this well, coffee well, well. Thank you, Mom, for inviting me. Thank you. And thank you, everyone. Wishing you happiness and health. Thank you for watching.